Is Deutsche Bank about to implode? Today, I'm going to show you why. The restructuring plan that they announced just last July 5th has already failed. I'll be answering a viewer's question about how an insolvent bank can manage to survive for so long and why Deutsche Bank is now, and all of us are frankly, on borrowed time. But perhaps the most important thing that we're going to look at today is further evidence that global central banks are getting into the position for that dollar gold reset. All of this coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang. Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service physical precious metals brokerage dealer specializing in custom strategies to help you survive and, dare I say it, even thrive through the reset that has already begun. Now, there's been a lot. I'm going to update you on Deutsche Bank and Megan, make sure you put some other links. But if you go to our blog, I've done so much uh, material on Deutsche Bank over the years. If you put it in the search bar, you can go back and look at all of it. And you should. But for those that are new to Deutsche Bank, what you need to understand is that in 2007, they were the second largest bank globally by assets. That growth was aggressively created by massive buying of derivatives, which are simply bet contracts, and it's all about leverage. Once the crisis hit in 2008, Deutsche Bank started to struggle because of all of these derivatives and all of these other you know, litigations. I mean, there's a lot to Deutsche Bank. But now, since then, it's lost 90%, the stock has lost 90% of its value. So you could really say that Deutsche Bank has died. But there are reasons why central banks have to keep it together. And we're going to look at that today, and you can see that in many of the other videos. So recently, on the 5th of July, the last ditch effort, the last gamble to restructure the bank and have it viable. But frankly, it's a joke. You could just look at what's happened. Now, going to that viewer question on how uh, an insolvent bank can survive, one way are funding rounds that are funded by, it might look like individuals or other corporations or governments etc. But this cash was made very available by the Global Central Bank's quantitative easing program. So this is one way that you keep a stock kind of looking viable, but it's declined 90%. You could say that that's a collapse. And truthfully, it wasn't really all that long a period of time. But now a run has begun because some of their key large hedge funds have begun to move their funds out of Deutsche Bank into other facilities to the tune of roughly a, a billion dollars per day. So the run on Deutsche Bank has begun. One of the things that I really want you to think about in here though, because we've seen it over and over and over again, is that the big kahunas that understand what's happening, they get out. What about the depositors to Deutsche Bank? You think they have much of a clue that their wealth that's held there is about to be bailed in? Just saying. Because really what we're seeing, and what I'm going to show you in a few slides, is that the central banks are already prepping for that dollar to gold reset that I talk about. And they're already prepping to allow gold to go to its true fundamental value. 
Not yet, not till they do the reset, but they've already begun to let it go. And we'll be talking more about that in near future videos. Because how do collapses happen? Slow and then fast. So this is out of, this is the financial summary for Deutsche Bank out of its uh, Q2 financial report that just came out. And one of the things that I want you to notice, and I've talked about this quite a bit, is the leverage ratio. And what that actually means is that is the amount of room that Deutsche Bank's or any bank's the leverage ratio, any bank's assets can decline before they are insolvent. So what that basically means is that they went out and they borrowed 97 cents to create $1 worth of equity, uh, or $97 to create $1 worth of equity. So if that value of that equity declines by that three, in this case, 3.9%, there's no equity there. So when there's a run, which has begun with Deutsch, even though they've been insolvent for a while, and they've certainly had really crappy leverage levels, you know, the run is what's going to perpetuate their demise that they can't get out of. And it's already begun. That's why it doesn't matter what they did. July 5th, too little, too late, it's done. So that the lower that leverage ratio is, the higher the risk level is. They managed to get it up for a minute or two, but it's declined now from 4.1% down to 3.9%. That's really, really dangerous. Now, in addition to that, on their income, cost to income ratio was 112.6%. That means that they spent 12.6% more than they had coming in and what does that equal? Well, that, that's simple. That e equals losses. But, you know, in 2008 was the first time in 50 years that Deutsche Bank actually showed a loss. I didn't really have time to dig this up. I'll probably do it for the next video I do on it. But every time I would go back to see how far back these losses went, it kept saying, well, four years, four years, four years. So you can't hold me to this till I actually pull up the data. But I think, I know over the last eight years, Deutsche Bank has not made a profit. How long can you go without making a profit? And this quarter, the second quarter loss here, is the largest one going back to the first quarter of 2017. And they had losses in 17, 18, and for sure, looks like 19 as well. So I have to tell you, without any doubt in my mind, Deutsche Bank is a zombie company that has managed to stay afloat thanks to the good graces and all of the manipulations of the central bank easy money policy. And this, my friends, is why they can't change course. This is why they cannot raise interest rates, nor can they stop buying bonds, mortgage-backed securities, stocks, for God's sakes, why the central banks, the sovereign wealth funds, the governments have to support the markets and why it will drive us into first modern money theory, which is pure printing, which will bring on the hyperinflation. But we are super close because without one doubt in my mind, Deutsche Bank is holding on by a thread. And I'm not sure that they have the ability or the central banks even have the ability to hold that thread together. Because the problem really stems, goes back to those derivatives, which are just leveraged bets. They're a cheaper way to play, but that's the way all of the banks have been making their money. And that really started once they, uh, once they shifted your, in 95, they allowed the sweep accounts so that they could sweep whatever deposits you make into your savings account, into your checking account, into sub accounts, and then they could use that. Shortly after they did that, that was 95, 
But then, of course, we had the test of the speculative derivative market. And we're off to the races. It's much cheaper to buy a derivative, to buy an option, to buy a contract than it is to buy the underlying physical. And so that's the way the banks have made a lot of trading revenues. And we know that hasn't really worked real well for Deutsche Bank over this last year, especially considering those losses. But let me show you what their derivative book kind of looks like. And I say kind of looks like for a couple of reasons. Number one, in 2013, they changed the formulas of how to account for these derivative contracts. And it's called compression and netting. So they can take in the example, which I don't have here, but you'll see it in other videos on derivatives, where they can take something like a 452 a uh, billion dollars worth of derivatives. And by the time they wash it through all their accounting procedures, it comes out that it only has a risk value of nine. Okay, so nobody really knows the true value that it, that is at risk. So that's one reason why I say that. The other reason why I say that is I love their financial statement where they are carrying the value on their derivatives at what is determined, frankly, what they determine is fair value. And there are three different levels. The first level, level one, is market driven. So those would be exchange traded derivatives, things like that, where at least at the moment, there is a reasonably liquid market with people buying and selling. They're more standardized. They're the kinds of things that came out after the 2008 crisis. Though all those derivatives created prior to that, guess what? You'll see in a minute. They're still holding on to them. So that's level one. And that is actually higher than their level three, but definitely not as high as level two. And level two is where you get to be a little creative because there's not like a real active market on it. So you can use a formula to kind of value what they might be. Okay. But then level three, and that's where most of their derivative contracts are. But then level three are opaque. There is no market value on there at all. So frankly, it's anybody's guess as to how much that they are actually worth. Now, in the restructuring plan, initially they tried to find buyers for their derivatives or at least some of their derivatives. And they didn't have a whole lot of luck doing that because they would have had to have marked down, in other words, um, where they say 133 billion, they would have had to have marked that down substantially because when they went out to shop selling them, the market just wasn't there. So what they decided to do instead was to maintain their derivatives. Okay, we're not gonna sell them rather than sell them at current market values, yeah, because then it would have been impossible to hide in how bad a shape to the normal person. The guys that are in the background, the guys at the top and the central banks, they already know how bad a shape Deutsche Bank is in. But that would have made it a whole lot more public. So we do not want to write those down. We do not want anybody to know the true value or lack thereof of the derivatives that right now, hey, we get to say this is what it's worth. Now I'm going to start reading and then I'm going to pull up this other part because the speak is ridiculous. Okay. So, uh, so Deutsche Bank says, the metric we look at is how much capital we are freeing up from the capital release unit. So this is a new bad bank unit that they're setting up. Okay, at the end of this process, and who knows how long that will take, I don't think we're gonna see the end of this process, gonna be done way before then, and I'll show you why I say that in a minute. Uh, let's see, at the end of this process, 
the capital, the CRU capital release unit will release substantial capital that allows us to undertake this restructuring. That is just garbage. But they're setting up this bad bank unit so they can move this illiquid garbage over there and make their books look cleaner. The problem is, is that they did that during when the crisis was unfolding in 2008, 2009, and they're still sitting with them because there's no market. But hey, most of the valuations come from either Deutsche Bank's formulas or Deutsche Bank's guesses. Oh, okay, I trust that. How about you? How much litigation do they have? Tons and tons and tons. They have made so many mistakes. But that's why I say it, it's dead in the water. It is an absolute joke. The likelihood of them being able to go out and issue stocks and generate another funding round to keep them going. I think uh, investors, and that could even be the central bankers, are getting really tired of it because they know that at best, at best, it is a short-term stopgap measure. And the question is, what are they going to do? Going back to that viewer question, thank you, IMF. I love the IMF in so many ways. Some ways I really can't stand them. But I love their working papers. They just came out with this yesterday. How perfect was that last night? Public interventions in the financial sector. That is banks being bailed out. And that would certainly include Deutsche Bank, but frankly, it includes all of them. And you can see this starts in 2007, and the most current data, even though they just pulled this up, was 2017, and frankly, there was a pretty big difference between 2016 and 2017. 2017, they bailed out 16 banks. Well, what does that look like? Because, hey, who cares about the bailing out? Well, first of all, you and me, taxpayers, were responsible for that. But, you know, you've seen and been watching the um, key central bank balance sheet. This one is what? The Fed, the ECB, and the Bank of Japan. So, you know, will they do more QE? Of course they will. They don't have any other tools. Will they do negative rates? Of course they will. They're setting up for it. We've been watching all of these pieces go click, 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 click. Used to happen more slowly. It's not happening so slowly anymore. And that is a big, huge trigger that should tell you that this crisis is very, 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 very near. Because, boy, I, you know, I can't even do anything light these days. So will they print more? Absolutely. Will it save us? No, it will not. It won't save the system. And therefore, particularly if you're in that system, it will not save you. It will not. Because Deutsche Bank is connected to every single financial institution on the planet and has their finger in every single financial product that exists. You see how it's connected, whether it's the US, Europe, or Asia, and then all those little gray lines. We've looked at this before. Thank you, IMF, for that fabulous chart to show how everybody is incestuously intertwi intertwined and not in a good way. And this is why they've had to prop it up. But, you know, you get to a point where you just can't do it anymore. And it really does look like we're very, very close to that. But now I want to show you something that really is super important. Because in 1993, the Federal Reserve discussed the opportunities that could present to break psychology if they manipulated the gold price. If the gold price broke in that context, the thermometer would not be just a measuring tool, right? Measurement of the fiat money. 
it would basically affect the underlying psychology. Oh, gold never goes up. Oh, it's just an old, you know, relic who cares about it. So in 1993, uh, actually even before this, but here is an outright statement from Alan Greenspan. Anybody can go into the federal um, FOMC meeting minutes, so the Federal Reserve meeting minutes, and read it for themselves. It took a minute, but they came out in 99 with the Central Bank Gold Agreement, CBGA, where they coordinate their gold sales. Isn't that nice? But guess what just happened on the 26th of this month? So just a couple days ago. Well, the every four years they have to renew the agreement and they're no longer going to renew it because the market has matured. Market's been around for 6,000 years. It's a much older market than any of the other markets that are frankly out there. So that is just a garbage excuse. But they made sure to confirm that gold remains an important element of global monetary reserves. Yeah. And none of the central banks that are part of this agreement have any plans to sell any significant amounts of gold. So what did that look like? Well, this is when they first came out with the agreement and these bars are the gold sales that they did. And you can see how in 2008, when spot gold was plunging, dropped 32, 35%, look at that spike in selling. But boy, look at how that dropped off and virtually no selling after that, virtually none. This, this particular graph from the ECB, follow the links, you can read the report, you can follow, you can look at these graphs on their site from the ECB, shows you what, gold, what central bankers think about gold. Hmm, not such a worthless relic, I'm thinking. Because they, we know this, they've accumulated more gold over the last rolling four quarters than the highest levels that they have going back to when the World Gold Council started tracking this. So they're accumulating at the same time that, boy, they are not letting it loose. They're not selling it anymore. Now, why can they control the um, derivatives? Because that's $110 to control 500 physical ounces. Cheap, easy, hey, they don't even have to go out and work for it. They can push a button and create it. So they are accumulating the physical at the same time that they are manipulating the intangible and in manipulating with Wall Street products. That goes back to my daddy. Thank you very much. Do as I say and not as I do. Doesn't work. They don't want you to protect yourself at the same time that they are clearly protecting themselves. Clearly. The choice is up to you, but I'm telling you, all of this stuff, I mean, there was a time when I had to hunt out what was going on? What was I going to talk about? I had more time to go into teaching and things like that. And frankly, it took me a bit of work to find new news on gold. Guess what? That's not been the case for a long time now. Things are happening fast and furious. How does a bankruptcy happen? How does a collapse happen? How does a crisis happen? Slow, then fast. And the fast is heating up now. Pay attention to this. That's what we're seeing. That's what everything is telling us. So now President Trump put tariffs 10% on China. So how are those trade talks going? Powell, Fed Chair Powell, lowered the interest rates a quarter of a percent to, to appease who? As a preemptive move, but to appease who? Stop running off their balance sheet. That means that they cannot allow the garbage that they bought to mature. They have to take the principal and the interest and reinvest it to keep the treasury market supported, to keep the mortgage-backed market supported, even though they've been doing that one real, 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 real well. We're close, people. We're close. I can't tell you the exact moment 
because this is a Jenga economy. Which piece that pulls out is going to make it impossible to hide? But look at what's happening now. This is getting pretty visible. This is getting real visible, actually. So when you hear me concerned or nervous, it's because I'm watching this speed up and so are you. So are you. What are you going to do about it? I know what I'm doing about it. I'm accumulating. I'm looking at my personal strategy. Where are the holes? Where can I fill in those holes? Food, water, energy, security, community, barterability, wealth preservation, shelter. Get it done. Get it done. And if you need our help, every single strategy specialist here has been trained in the strategy that I created for myself just based on repeatable patterns. It's not rocket science. But history has a tendency to repeat itself. I remember my Uncle Al with those safes full of pre-33 coins. Now, it wasn't just Aunt Bertie didn't have anything to worry about. Neither did any of his heirs. That's the way you can, at least that's the way you could hold it when it was illegal to own more than nine ounces, more than, I'm sorry, five ounces. Gee, I think that's a pretty brilliant way to do it. So next week, I'm really, really excited. This will be a new Coffee with Lynette, Patrick Bet David. He, he has a channel, it's called Valuetainment, if you want to go ahead and look at it first. But boy, he talks to everybody. He's got a very, very broad knowledge base, and I'm very excited to talk to him next week. And if you have any questions, just remember, just send them to questions at itmtrading.com. And also, you might want to think about when you're going back to look at these other ones, which Megan will give you the link to the uh, blog, because then you can just put in that search bar, Deutsche Bank for example, and it'll pull up all of the videos that I've done in the past, and there have been quite a few on Deutsche Bank, because we need to be paying attention to the evolution. People think nothing's happened. Heck, I show you every single week what is happening. Just because it hasn't become visible to the public yet doesn't mean nothing's happening. Ignorance does not make you immune. It just leaves you vulnerable. And quite honestly, I don't want anybody to be vulnerable. I can't stand these guys. Because they think they have the right to do this to all of these people that are just trying to take care of their families and keep food, water, energy, security, shelter. Take care of their families with that. And we always need barterability. We always need wealth preservation. And they don't want us to have it. We have to become our own central bankers and do it for ourselves. And remember, financial shields are based upon physical gold and physical silver. That's it. That's why all the central bankers are buying a hand over fist. And why JP Morgan is buying silver hand over fist. So until next week, make sure you share. These recent videos that I've been doing, seriously, people need to see this. They need to understand what's going on. Follow the links. Don't take my word for anything. Do your own due diligence. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.